As you can see, Zach there on your right, Michael on your left. It looks like so maybe they're still sculpting their hands. I thought Michael was going to go ahead and be taking the, the, the play in game one here. Yeah, I think rearranging here, looking for certain things. Zach, um, very, very good player. Um, and uh, Michael Roy is a name I've seen around, too. I believe we've seen other challengers. So we have two like really high-caliber players here who are not only fighting for a top cut, but fighting for seeding in the top cut. And why is that important, Tannen? And uh, look, getting to go first in game one of best of three tomorrow, unbelievably important. Mm -hmm. uh, something Some of these players, I've seen Zach actually play a lot of the extra games here. You know, some players in their last round like to draw and just, you know, go home a little early, get some rest. Zach's like, no, no, I want the points. I want to be better seated. And I got I to wonder, I, I'm going to see if, like, towards the end of the season when we're done with all these challenges, if I can get, like, the point totals from players from all of the challenges. And my betting favorite for most points accrued across the entire season is going to be Zach Bevins. Yeah, I, there's something else I want to point out with Zach, though. Um, so not only does Zach fight to get... So Zach fights, as you said, to get the highest number of points every single time to try to get the top seed. But it's actually served him well in another way. Uh, Zach has placed so high at various competitions that he's actually qualified for the North American Championship, even though I don't think he's placed in the top 16 yet, because we have had players and other challenges repeat in the top cut. And so Zach, based on pure seeding, a man to take one of those slots, so uh, uh, as a pass down, mm -hmm. yeah, as yeah. a pass down. So very talented player, and um, it served him well fighting to the end. Uh, we're going to see some very good one drops from both decks here. I've got to believe we've got a Robin Hood on a Michael side here, and Zach. I think he's got a choice on one drops here. It looks like a Pegasus, and uh, oh, it looks like three different choices: a Pegasus, followers. And a Cursed Merfolk, I think. Yeah, definitely um, three very different options here. You know, one of the things that the Ruby, uh, I'm sorry, the Emerald Amethyst deck usually wants to do, I, I think of it as a two-phased deck. In the first part of the game, you're trying to gather as much lore as possible to try to get at least to like 12, 13 lore because you're often playing control decks, uh, Ruby decks, which have be prepared and a lot of removal, or steel decks, which can deal with most of your characters that eventually you have to plan for losing control of the board. It doesn't always happen but it often happens. And at that point, you're trying to close out the game with a few lore per turn, and particularly goat bounces if you can draw into them. So in the early game, it's, it's imperative that you scoop up as much lore as you possibly can to make those goats and goat bounces a viable closing option for you. Powerful two-drop here from Michael as well to follow up this Robin Hood. He's got a Mr. Shmee, uh, who's one of my favorite steel cards, one of the best two-drops they've ever printed in the game. Yeah, I mean, well-statted, a lot of lore, um, great card to get in the board. And, you know, the fact that he takes a damage if he's exerted at the end of the turn doesn't seem to phase most people because you can get a lot of value out of him in the meantime. Absolutely. Still trades really well and challenges as well. All right, look, one good two-drop deserves another one. That is a Sir Hiss on Zach Bevan's side here. Both these decks really, really coming out to the races. Sir Hiss is a really fun card. You know, we talked about the importance of good stats on turn two. As you pointed out, another well-statted card with that three strength. Now, a lot of times Sir Hiss is in these decks to kind of overpower the Flynn, Flynn Rider Flenemy, Frenemy matchup or card in uh, the Ruby matchup. But here it does serve as an answer to Smee. Um, if Michael tries to race ahead here, uh, Sir Hiss can answer it. Yeah, Sir Hiss is one of those cards when I first saw it kind of popping in these lists. I'm like, yeah, it's a, you know, it's a three-one evasive. It's, it's fine. And then I started playing games and seeing the effects it had against, you know, Flynn Rider, like you're talking about, or challenging other two drops, or just singing every single turn in some of the, you know, the Lemon Lime decks that we've seen even Zach play here. And the fact that it has evasive means it can't be challenged after singing. And the effect it's had on the games, I, I didn't realize how much this card would do that. Mm-hmm. No, that, that's exactly right. And we're seeing now, though, why Steel is a tough matchup for this particular deck. It's because in another matchup without this uh, damage-based removal, um, Zach is able to quest for two lore here every turn without uh, Michael being able to answer it because both those characters are evasive, and Michael now removing that as an option um, and able to race ahead for a bit of lore on his own. Yeah, Michael is pointing that baboom over at that Pegasus here this round as you just eloquently put, put here. And uh, a little bit more damage-based removal in Michael's hand behind here. I think I saw a grab your swords, maybe a second copy of Baboom. I saw a lot of steel cards. And that's, is that what he wants in this matchup? Uh, is, that is definitely what he wants. Um, grab your sword is a card that's going to do a lot of work in this matchup. Um, but here's a fun card. Uh, Jacques is, is a delightful little card that came out in set four and has been worked into a lot of these decks. It does two things for you here. One, it does give one of your opponent's characters reckless, forcing them to challenge on the turn rather than quest if they're able to. But the other thing is, it is a well stacked added character with two lore on turn three. Yeah, another great spot here for a well-studied character, like you were saying. And and the, these guys haven't really missed a beat here yet this game. And I as well say, I see a 
beast tragic hero in michael's hand over here is our sad beast a lot of people like a lot of people like to put it uh i love the nicknames the community has come up with for some of this stuff it's it's because i'm like yep that is sad beast it just it just works and Mm -hmm. he would have to give up a pretty good card here though to do it if he wants to ink say like that baboom or something along the lines of so i think that's what he's trying to think of here is like how do i want to play this out this turn but i gotta i was gonna say are we about to ink the the beast here and get the rabbit in play instead i think we might but instead Dead. There's the thought about it, uh, but the boom goes into the inkwell instead. Uh, you know, there's another version of Beast, uh, Beast Hard Headed, which is which is on the art like smashing a copy of the Illuminary, and that one is colloquially referred to as Mad Beast. <laughs> I, I'm very hard headed, so I get that one as well. <laughs> I, I identify with that one a little bit more. But it looks like he does go ahead and go with the rabbit, opting for the extra card here instead of the very good uh, Sad Beast. So back over to Zach Bevins. You see that Reckless still there on that Shmi, so it wasn't able to do anything that turn. So interestingly, Shmi does, Reckless does say you have to challenge if, if able. able. Yeah. Um, and uh, Sir Hiss not being a viable, because it's evasive, not being a viable target, and also with a ready character there. Um, yeah, cannot quest, must challenge it. Yep. Yeah, so I just can't so do just anything. Can't, can't do anything, just sit there and... And bumble around, and it kind of just puts him to sleep for a turn. It does. It's like, it does. look, Shmi, you go over there in your ship. Go look for Captain Hook. You'll, you'll be, we'll be here a little bit when you get back. But that is one of the reasons that Jacques uh, is such a good card in this deck, because as you pointed out, there's just not a lot of removal or ways to deal with your opponent's characters in this color combo. And so having cards like Jacques, and uh, there's another card. Um, Gosh, I'm blanking out of the name. Uh, Lyle, Lyle Rourke, um, which can, has a similar effect. Um, those are great additions to this deck. Zach went ahead and made his fourth ink there and got his own rabbit into play, getting another card into his hand. We're back over to Michael Arroyo here. It looks like he's going to go ahead and sing a friend from the other side. And this is a difference between uh, the play and the draw here. Zach had a friend from the other side of there, but he wasn't able to sing it. Uh, that's or, or He w- didn't decide not to sing. He went ahead and inked it instead. So didn't want to exert his jock just yet on that side of the board and give any really, really good uh, challenges to Michael Arroyo. He, Michael, though, he's going to be able to sing here and then I was going to say, does he want to pick this up? No, it looks like he's going to go ahead and just go ahead with that beast. Yeah, this is this this is one of the reasons, again, I highlighted that Steel is such a challenging matchup for this color combo. Not only is it a removal, but then these powerful mid-game characters. There's not a lot of answers uh, in these colors for that. Um, some players run Mother Knows Best, which can bounce Beast back to your hand and er, to your opponent's hand and, and perhaps delay it a turn. Um, you can also give him Reckless and force him to challenge. But other than that, you know, oftentimes you risk just letting Beast sit there and draw your opponent an extra card each turn, um, which just doesn't feel good. Absolutely. I don't think that Zach has an actual answer to Beast here, so it looks like that card advantage engine is going to be online for Michael Arroyo here. Mm, and Zach, yeah, not a lot of options. You do have those Merfolk in there, but they're uninkable and susceptible to the grab your sword. Uh, I'm not sure. Zach is, probably knows that might be there, but um, clearly trying to save those for the late game. One thing that can kind of be used as removal for Zach, if he could ever get the Beast to be exerted, is it looks like he does have a crab in his hand, so it allows some of these smaller statted uh, characters to be able to, you know, challenge a little bit more effectively, but as you see, that beast isn't exerted yet, just uh, just yet, and the only thing that he can really attack into is that rabbit. He's got things that could already do that if he wants. Yeah, I'm sure Michael's going to be happy to let that beast sit there for several turns, just give him that card advantage, play with the rabbits, just build up his hand to the point that he has all the cards he needs to close out this game. Looks like the the crab is going to go ahead and make sure that that Merlin can take care of his counterpart, and then a Madame Mim's going to come in and pick that Merlin up, and maybe give that uh, that card draw another go here. Uh, one out of the hand from being removed from play, and then possibly another one next turn when he plays it yet again. We've seen this all day long with these Amethyst decks. <laughs> this is this is a tale as as old as time, all the way back to Rise of the Floodborn with Madame Mim chasing Merlin back to the hand. Um, it does feel bad to banish one of your opponent's cards if it gives them a card, but you know one of the things these bounce decks wants to do is maximize the value of those rabbits to get you three, four, five cards, so getting it off the board is, is fantastic. And I've had a lot of people talk to me about the Amethyst Mirrors, that sometimes rabbit can be really important. You try not to let it get too exposed, because if you can keep a rabbit around and keep bouncing it, that's a recipe for uh, success in the mirror because you're just getting more cards. Mm-hmm. But with Beast around, uh, I don't think Michael's going to be uh, short on cards. Anytime soon, I see a castle. I'll say, well, oh, here we go. I think he also has two more rabbits in hand. So it's Robin Hood Sherwood here showing up. Another yeah. big, huge play for Michael Arroyo here. Another problematic character for Zach to deal with. It looks like Grab Your Swords is going to get sung by Beast here. 
when Beast is in Beast form, is, is he really that much of a sing? I don't think he has that good of a singing voice. Do you? Mm, probably not. Although, no, probably not. Although in the in the live action film, he did a fantastic, oh, a sure, fantastic sure, song. Sure. Um, no, I don't. I don't know if he made people grab swords so much as pitchforks and torches, but here it was definitely swords. That is true. So, uh, fun little interaction here. You know, sing, grab your sword uh, made uh, Jacques vulnerable to a challenge from Robin Hood there. So, it, uh, Mike labeled the challenge without Robin Hood and gained two lore off banishing Jacques. And now he did expose the beast uh, to, to a, perhaps a return challenge. That crab, if it's able to be bounced back to hand uh, with a fox, perhaps um, will allow Michael to take care of that beast in short order. But um, the trade off here to getting control of the board seems to be worth it. Absolutely. It doesn't look like that's going to be what happens just yet. A rabbit's going to start off for the turn here for Zach, getting him another card. A couple options here. It looks like he's going to go ahead and ink the Ursula, follow this up with, let's say, is that, okay, there we go. Got a trade here, a challenge here. That takes care of this board. And they're supposed to say, how about the two cursed merfolk? He got to grab the swords out mm -hmm. of hand, and hopefully there isn't another copy of it for, for Zach here with the way that he's played this game. Uh, from a, a spot that looked really bad for Zach, definitely back in this game. Yeah, this definitely feels better. Um, one thing I think that you said in an earlier match is that Grab Your Sword is a card that we've seen fewer of in this meta with Bucky being removed um, and fewer Emerald Steel decks running around. And so there may only be one copy in Michael's deck. Uh, we don't know, but Zach is kind of counting on them being not that many around and drop, feeling a little bit more safe dropping those Merfolk here. Yeah. Michael's going to go ahead and quest up to 11 here. He's going to go ahead and move Robin Hood over to the castle. Hmm. Another Captain Hook, I think, going into the ink here. Yeah, just keep developing the ink here. He's got two more rabbits at hand. Wants to get as much ink as possible, so he can start playing those multiple times a turn. Mm -hmm. Back yep. over to Zach here. Uh, a little bit of a deficit here on the ink, down 11 to 3. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a challenging position to be in. The Merfolk are fantastic for questing. They're fantastic for questing early. One thing they're not great at is challenging. And when you have a seven willpower castle over there, um, it's, uh, it's, a lot. it's a lot to deal with. Yeah, castle, real hard one to deal with for practically any character in one shot in the game. You know, we've seen, like, the reckless, you know, bodyguards of Hercules showing up and stuff like that. And without Crab, I don't know if Zach's going to be able to do that. The Merfolks, uh, unfortunately... They don't challenge very well. <laughs> no, they don't. So you mentioned earlier, uh, we talked about grab your sword and how Zach was probably waiting for the right moment, trying to draw that out. And once it's played, he feels safer playing the merfolk. Probably a similar dynamic for Michael with that crab on the board. Um, seeing that crab in play, he knows that all Zach has to do is find a way to remove that crab from the board, and that castle can be taken down perhaps with one or two characters. So with the crab being gone, that castle feels pretty safe. That's a really, really good point. Uh, I've always found that to be one of the most fascinating parts in any of the Amethyst Mirrors is when you play your castle. Mm-hmm. All right, and well, we've got our goat sighting for Zach Bevins here. That's going to go ahead and move him up just a little bit. He's up to seven lore here. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's it's usually you save the goats to the end game to you can bounce them, but here it is a four-strength character, and if uh, Zach wants to deal with that castle, he needs to get some more strength on the board, and that's probably the value of the goat here. Absolutely. Let's see, I think he has one card left in his hand here. Let's see if he wants to deploy it here just yet. Thinking about possibly questing as well. I will note, let's, let's uh, note Don Carnage there. We're, we're not seeing him play here. We are seeing him going into the inkwell. But this is a card which we haven't seen a lot of in the competitive meta. And it's an example of, of Zach pulling in uh, a little bit of spice, something uh, unusual. Uh, Kid Cloud Kicker uh, showing up here. A nice little tempo play going ahead and returning that Captain Hook to Michael Arroyo's hand. I mean, a, a cheap card that Michael's going to be able to get in the board again pretty easily, but um, it'll deprive Michael, Michael of a card there um, since he doesn't have uh, an extra character sitting on that castle, just the Robin Hood. Yeah, really big for, for Zach there, denying some cards for Michael Royo. If he can keep up with what's in play, he might have a chance if he can keep it from drawing too many extra cards a turn. Yeah, and now, so Michael with only one character left on the board, uh, he won't be able to remove both of those merfolk with what he's showing. Um, so Zach here is, is really in a race. That's what this has become. Um, of course, Michael will gain two lore off banishing one of those merfolk, but Michael now has to start thinking about uh, finding an answer for this wide board. Um, Zach went from, I think, feeling like he was on the ropes, or at least we thought he was on the ropes, to looking at a pretty comfortable position here. Yeah, he's, he's played this pretty, pretty well. All right, it looks like Robin Hood is going to go ahead and challenge one of those merfolk, like you said. Discard effect coming for Michael Arroyo. He's going to go ahead and pitch one of those sad beasts. Definitely sad going there. So sad. What a tragic... Try if you're, if you're sitting in Zach's seat and you see him pitch that beast there, are you a little worried about what's left over in the hand? Uh, maybe, but I mean, it, I mean, it has to feel good anytime you see a beach, uh, beast pitched. But Michael here thinking about you know if, getting as many characters on the board as possible to challenge some of those smaller bodies. Um, 
throwing both Rabbit and Hook into the Queen's Castle. Yeah, castled up here, Zach. Drawing his only card that he's got here for the turn. I hear you doing math. I am. I'm, I'm, count, I'm counting lore. Uh, counting lore. Yeah, Michael with six lore on the board with that castle, and so Zach has to figure out how to put himself in striking distance while removing at least uh, at least two lore. Because problem, one lore. Because so. problem number one is not not lose. Not lose. <laughs> right. And then how do I win from here? So it looks like so start with the rabbit going into. Robin Hood. That's going to get Zach an extra card here. I like that play to start off with. Get as much. Of, for, for anybody at home that's watching one of these, if you're ever going to be making a bunch of plays in a turn, and and one of them is going to draw you a card, it's almost always correct to start off with the, the play of drawing the card here because you want all of the information before you start making decisions. That's exactly right. All right. Looks like the goat's going to go ahead and finish off with the trade here with the Robin Hood. Yeah, and unfortunately, um, that does remove the Robin Hood from the castle, so there's no extra card draw there, but Michael does get a card when Robin Hood Champion of Sherwood is banished in a challenge, so drawing into another card here. Uh, and yeah, so just just a, a lot for, for Zach to deal with. Yeah, so four lore still showing for Michael. That wouldn't be all of it. He'd go to 19, but you have to worry about possible goats for Michael here as well, so... Zach may be trying to figure out a way to get him to 18 while still having something going on, but I don't know if he's going to be able to do that. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to remove the castle or any more of these characters, so I think Zach just has to hope and cross his fingers here. Yeah, I mean, I think Zach was trying to draw into something like a Lyle, which had Reckless, or something like, like this. Um, that, what a great card to drop here. So now Michael has to deal with something on the board. Uh, Ursula, uh, Sea Witch Queen, has three lore on it. Um, and so three with the other three, that's six. And so Michael now has to devote at least some resources to removing the Merfolk or the Kit. Does he, does, does he have a goat? And with that three lore, that puts him one goat away. That's a really good point for Zach Bevins here as well. Zach doing what he can with what he's got. Michael with a lot of, I think, four cards in his hand, five cards in his hand. He's got so many. Castle just doing so much work here. Yeah, so we'll see. Uh, as you said, we'll see if he has the goat or, or even better, the goat bounce. I don't know. Just the goat would close it out, wouldn't it? Yep. But he's thinking about this a long time, which leads me to believe that he doesn't have the goat in here. This hand. would be a really good slow roll. <laughs> <Yeah, if not. laughs> <laughs> so let's see what you, what you see this. So hook right. going into the merfolk. Go ahead. Yeah, pitch his card for there. He's going to go ahead and clean up the kit as well. All right, so so now Zach can't win on his turn with everything that's face up. It would have to be with some goat shenanigans. It looks like a Merlin rabbit is going to get followed up by a Merlin, wait, a Merlin goat. Okay. Yep. That must have been the card that was drawn off the rabbit. Yes. So I do. And I see a little shake of the head. Maybe, maybe it was the card that was drawn off the rabbit, and he realized, had I just started my turn with this, maybe... I would have drawn the card and seen that you, I, yeah. You know what? That's that's exactly right, Tan. And um, yeah. playing the rabbit late, drew into the goat, he had game um, if he had done that in the other order. So you pointing out earlier that the drawing the card first, uh, always a good idea because uh, you have more information. We'll say I was getting a note from my editor. There we go. It looks like we are going to get it from we the are beginning. Right, All right. right from the, the hand author. The players, were, the players were so amped and ready to go. We, we thought we <laughs> might have we missed turn one, but it looks like we got there just in time. Yeah, that's so fun. There's so many fun notes last game. You know, one of the things I want to talk about the mid-game last game is those merfolk. Um, because I think a lot of folks think about those as um, early game aggressive cards. And we're going to see them with Zach on the play used in that way here. Um, getting down early, able to get Zach hopefully a bunch of lore in the early game. Um, where Zach can, as we talked about, get within goat striking distance for the later game. But... Um, in the previous game, Zach opted instead uh, to hold on to this Murphy because he did have one available turn one. And being on the draw, I think he chose to save those until the right moment and then drop them all on the board to be a big lore threat. And so Zach's showing, showing some versatility there in how he chooses to use these uh, one-drop cards. Yeah, big lore threat is exactly what's going to happen this game, though. It is going to be on turn one. Go ahead and quest for two, followed up by Sirius. This is the start that Zach wants when he's on the play. Yeah, and Michael not having a one drop there to do with Merfolk is not, not an ideal start for him. Let's see, does he have a play here for turn two? Um, he does. I think okay. I saw a Smee at the very least. Oh, we have a Blue Fairy. Okay. I love Blue Fairy. And you were telling me, this is, this is a card that you, you've seen kind of come in and out of uh, the metagame quite a bit at times. Yeah, I wouldn't describe this as an unpopular card. The, the thing with Blue Fairy, though, is it, it's very popular in these uh, Amethyst Steel decks because there are so many good Floodborne available in Steel. Um, not only have Jafar, but you have the new Aladdin, you have Beast Tragic Hero, you have Tinkerbell. There's just a lot. Um, the problem is, the reason you don't see the Blue Fairy is a ton is because this Amethyst Steel deck, they haven't really... Crack like 
worked their way into the top five meta decks, I think. And so they've always been there, but you don't see them in competitive events too often because you just don't see the, the Amethyst Steel decks up there that much. But it's a fantastic card. It draws you a card whenever a Floodborne's played. Mm -hmm. Really efficient turn three here for Zach. He gets to quest with the uh, the two characters, then use Metamim to pick up the Cursed Merfolk, replay them so they can't be challenged by Blue Fairy here for free. Mm -hmm. So Zach getting maximum value out of those Merfolk. And it's fantastic because... Blue Fairy, you know, we talked about the value of it drawing cards, but in this case, it could have served as an offensive card, dealing with the Merfolk and then turning around and dealing with the Hiss, but not able to do that here. Yeah, it's still a pretty good turn for you. They got to deal with the Merfolk, discard a card, and then you start going to get to draw a card off its ability this turn when you play a Floodborne. You've been pretty okay with that. And then what? You're going to trade your Sir Hiss into it because it has evasive. Like that, that would have been a really good, I think, uh, exchange for Michael Arroyo, and Zach has the play around it. Mm -hmm. and, and a fantastic use of Snake there, as you pointed out. Mm -hmm. Here we do see a Floodborne Aladdin come down on turn three. Uh, this card, I think a lot of people saw it initially. We were like, ah, it's fine. It banishes an item. It's, it's scenario-based. But but it is a three-drop Floodborne available in these steel decks and pairs well with Blue Fairy, and we see it used here for that purpose. Yeah, it used to be the other way around. It used to be with the, the, the Emerald decks along with Bucky, and now we're seeing it, you know, we're seeing it here today with Blue Fairy. And, uh, a card that, yeah, it's inkable, Decent stat line, but if you ever get to start using the ability where it destroys an item, that's where it really starts to hum. It feels so good. Yeah. <laughs> um, Blue Fairy here trading with the uh, Sir Hiss, I believe, to get rid of that evasive. So, you know, we talked about the game plan for Zach Bevins. Michael Arroyo knows exactly what Zach's trying to do, gain lore, as much lore as possible, because then the end game is really within reach, and Zach doing that perfectly. Yeah. Second verse, same as the first. Up to this time, it's a it's a fox that's going to come down and pick up that merfolk. Make sure can't be challenged. It just stays around. This merfolk, I think, is going to get something like six, ten, eight, ten lore this game. A lot of lore. Yeah. Now, Michael Steele, of course, is running cards like Baboom, which we do see one in hand to deal with that merfolk. We'll see if Michael wants to, to devote resources to dealing with it here, um, because at some point those merfolk become untenable. Yeah, he's got an Aladdin that can trade into this Bantam Mim if he wants. He can take care of that Merfolk. Let's see if he wants to use his ink more efficiently this turn. I don't know if he has anything else if he uses Baboom. So here we go. It's going to start with a Captain Hook. Followed up by the Baboom, it looks like. Yep. Yeah, get rid of this Merfolk. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to give up another card here. And you got to believe he's going to be challenging in. Yep, and there it is. So this board a lot more tenable for Michael Arroyo here. Captain Hook staring down the Madam Mim Fox here. Mm -hmm. Back back over to Mr. Bevins. But Bevins doing exactly what he wants to do this game. Uh, eight lore at this point is very comfortable, and now he's into the rabbit phase of the game, starting to draw some more cards. He'd like to be scooping up a, a lore or two per turn uh, here, because um, really I think the key number for Zach in the, in the end of the mid-game when he gets to the late game is about 11 or 12 lore, maybe 13. Um, and that makes the goats just feel very impactful in the late game. Gonna go ahead and ink down that big Ursula or his big plays, but maybe not anytime soon. And like you said, I think we're into the mid game here. We're gonna be concentrating on these foxes and these rabbits and doing some stuff like that. Yeah. Zach really taking a think here about whether they want to quest or not, and he finally decides to. I mean, this is a big choice. It, losing a, a fox, uh, which can provide a bunch of utility, you can perhaps bounce the fox back, get fox loots going to a Captain Hook feels bad, but every single lore here matters. And Zach is in the phase of the game where one or two lore per turn is perfectly fine with him, um, and that's what he's going to be looking at doing. Yep, there's that challenge you were talking about right after a rabbit comes down. Some more ink generation from Michael Rowe here, and that's going to lead into a Robin Hood. Mm. So back over to Zach here. What's he drawing for turn? He's got three cards left in his hand here. Are these going to be impactful enough to get him a split here in this round eight matchup? Uh, he yeah, he has the bounce. Uh, this yep. is great. The quest with the rabbit. We're going to get that lore. We're going to bounce the rabbit, get a card. Um, this is exactly what Zach wants to be doing. Yep. Great. So far from here, and I think he might have a two drop on this. I think I see an Ursula. Does he want to play it, though, is the question. Seems like he's debating. Yeah, interest, interesting choice here. Um, we we know, Zach doesn't know, there's a couple choices in there which he can he can pick. How much does Zach value that information, I think, is, is what he's thinking about right now. Yeah, do you know an argument for not playing Nersal here? <sighs> I, I think it's if you value the information later more than you value the information now. Um, there are points later in the game where Zach is going to make some choices about perhaps playing, you know, Cursed Merfolk or extending himself, and perhaps he's waiting until that moment. He might also be waiting until he gets another uh, Ursula uh, Floodborne, um, and perhaps uh, then able to play it and set up that shift later on. I think that would be, those would be the two reasons. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I was wondering if he was debating inking it. It did look like he decided to ink it here this turn. Yeah, that is true. I, and we do have a work. 
I, I didn't notice that in the hand. So uh, Lao Rook is another card similar to Jacques that lets you kind of control your opponent's board a little bit by giving a character Reckless when he comes into play, and I believe when he quests. Um, so this is going to force uh, Michael to, uh, yeah, not to quest, not to pursue that lore and challenge instead. Of course, Michael, I think, is thinking more about singing and more about challenging with his characters right now. Um, and we see that here, choosing to get rid of Zach's entire board um, with the cards at his disposal. Yeah, double along came Zeus for Michael here, and then he's going to quest off that one here. Great follow-up here, though, on the empty board for Zach. A rabbit here is going to get him an extra card deep. See a crab in hand, and then the rest of it I can't quite make out. Yeah, I wish I could tell. It might be another Lyle in the middle. I can't say it. Huge fan of the hand cams, by the way. Oh, yeah. Absolutely love them here. Let's play along. Yeah, it looks like that is another Lyle, I think. It and a Friends? Is that a Friends? It is a Friends. Okay. Yeah, so uh, one of the reasons removing that Fox was so impactful, I think Zach would have loved to sing that card with, uh, with Fox um, and now forced to, to wait. So okay. here we have Lyle work again, giving the rabbit reckless. Yep, gonna put the put the rabbit to sleep, as I like to call it, for a turn here. Uh, can't quest with this, can't challenge with it because there's nothing to challenge. A little bit of an earthquake over there in the feature match area. Yeah, and Michael with several cards in hand that are not super helpful. I think we will see the goat here, mostly because again it is a well-statted character which can challenge into that work. Um, four in a stat line always feels pretty impactful. Um, there's just fewer and fewer cards that can deal with um, anything over three. Um, so here, uh, the goat is is kind of the answer to work questing. But yeah, Michael not not with the cards he wants, um, but but able to control Zach's board just enough to keep him from running away with this game. Yep, he did get to get a, a lore there off the go, so it puts him at a two to Zach Bevan's ten. And it looks like we're going to go back over to Mr. Zach here and see what he's got. All right, so there's the friends from the other side, like you said, sung off the rabbit. Did he pick up any ways to pick it up? Yep, right away. We got a Madame Mim that's going to go ahead and pick up the rabbit, net another card for Zach here, and we're not even stopping here. We're going full tilt into the rabbit. Another card added to Zach Bevan's hand here. Multiple plays left over for him. I see a Pegasus. I see a Sir Hiss. Is that another rabbit in his hand? I think it might be another rabbit in his hand. So Pegasus is going to make it into the ink and Sir Hiss onto the board. Great redevelopment turn for Zach Bevins. You know, sometimes these amethyst mirrors come down to who can use their Merlins and Mims the best. And that Sorcerer's Spellbook, uh, interesting card in this matchup. Probably not a card that, that Michael was super happy to get at this point in the game, but this is a card which gives him one lore every single turn. He's able to sink a little bit of extra ink into it. So definitely put Zach on a clock. Uh, Michael is hoping to just drive the lore total a little bit higher. Um, what Michael really wants to do is try to get to a phase in the game where Zach is forced to respond to his board because he's threatening the game. Um, and so the Spellbook will help him get there if he draws into more removal. Uh, rabbit here, the first play for Zach, and I think that found a friends from the other side. So friends from the other side, rabbit, and I think some emerald card. And is that a Jacques? I think is that a Jacques? Yeah, I think it's a Jacques. So also a couple of options here for Zach. How does he want to sequence this turn? Does he want to sing friends from the other side? Who does he want to sing with? Does he want to pay ink for it? We'll have to find out. So it looks like he's going to go ahead and play the rabbit, get another card deeper, picks up a Pegasus. It's really developing a wide board here. So still plenty of options here. I mean, work. Uh, so it looks like we're going to trade into the rabbit, yeah. uh, get rid of the rabbit on, or not trade, rather, but sorry, challenge into the rabbit and uh, get rid of the rabbit on Zach's terms. It does look like he's going to go ahead and quest a little bit extra here with the evasive character and with the rabbit as well because he's got two of them. I'm sorry, he's got three of them, so losing one wouldn't be the end of the world here. Yeah, and, and again, leaving it there. Uh, there were other plays available. Of course, Work could have quested, given something reckless, um, but instead choosing to let things be, pushing the lore a little bit higher. Um, friends from the other side being sung here. Yep, Goat being used to sing Friends from the other side. A couple of really powerful cards added to Michael's hand. I think I see a Robin Hood and a, and a Bell. Ah, Bell, a accomplished mystic, I believe. There, there are some damage counters. There are damage counters. Board. So this is another uh, beautiful card. Uh, uh, well, I, love this heart, the the I love this heart, by the way. <laughs> beautiful card from this set. Uh, this is a card when it comes into play, allows you to shift damage counters from three, uh, or three damage counters from one of your cards or one of your opponent's cards to another card. So able to pull some shenanigans there. Uh, but we won't see that yet. Instead, we'll see Robin Hood shifting and uh, challenging into 
uh, the snake. Yeah, getting a little lore for his trouble there. Shmi's also going to lore up as well. Michael doing a very good job of developing this turn and getting a good bit of lore back into this game. Yeah, that's exactly what he needs to do. And that was a fantastic turn for, for Michael here. I'm not sure what the question is uh, here. Just mm. Looks like, let's say the lore was at nine for a second for Michael. It looks like it's back down to six. So it looks like this is where he's going to end up nine, I'm sorry, six to 12 here in favor of Zach. Yeah, I'm not, I, I, I should have been paying attention to the lore total. I think that might be a little behind, but at the very least, um, even if it is six, looking a little more palatable. Um, should have gotten two lore off the Robin Hood, two lore off the Smee, uh, one off the Spellbook. So that might, that might be right. Um, but back over to Zach. Zach's still with five lore on the board uh, if he chooses to quest out, putting him within goat striking distance with the goat bounce. A little bit extra. It's all Pegasus and an Ursula in hand. I think the friends from the other side still there. He's going to start off with a rabbit challenging into the Shmi, though. It's going to draw him an extra card here, getting him a Peter Pan off the top, the evasive Peter Pan with Rush. Yeah, Zach definitely, you can tell he's definitely playing this. Um, Cautiously and conservatively. He knows he's, he's in the driver's seat, choosing to remove um, the big lore characters where he can from Michael's side of the board, drawing into more cards. He knows he has card advantage. Um, so I'm just going to keep removing threats and keep drawing oh, the answers. So that's what was up. But we forgot about the Tiberius, that whenever one of your characters gets banished, your oh, opponent loses one lore. Yes, yeah. yes. So that's what the discussion was. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so that's a, it's a fun little catch-up mechanic. Uh, that's built into these uh, Emerald Amethyst decks, which I, is, it's a really great tool. It's one of the reasons that Lyle is such a great ad because oftentimes in these Emerald Amethyst decks, the phase two of the game feels like a race to 20. And I can't tell you how many times in this deck I have won with 20 lore when my opponent's at 17, 18, or 19, and it's a goat that pushes me over the edge. So that one lore reduction makes a huge difference in these games sometimes. Down to seven lore for Michael there. But he does get to draw a card for his efforts because of that Robert, Robin Hood getting banished. Zach going to go ahead and sing Friends from the Other Side. Ooh, I think I saw a goat get picked up. Wow, what, a, what a fantastic impact work has had here. They're really showing off that card here, I think, this game. Jacques added to hand. I think another Lyle Rourke was added to hand here. And Zach is just not running out of stuff anytime soon. No, he's, he's definitely taking full advantage of, of the rabbits. I, we may have seen all four rabbits. <laughs> uh, certainly, I, I think so, actually. Uh. <laughs> so a lot of rabbits, a lot of friends, and uh, knows he has card advantage. And uh, But here we have, uh, okay, so we did play the deceiver here. Um, Zach uh, figuring out this is where he wants to see what's going on. Probably has a choice to make about whether to extend himself or not, wanting to see what the options are that Michael has available. All right, he's going to go ahead and lure up here with the rabbit. It puts Zach up to 13. Yeah, again, this, I, I think this is just a, a master class on how to pilot, um, pilot this deck on the play especially um, and take advantage of, of you know, the card advantage that Amethyst offers you. Michael does have a Beast Tragic Hero available, a card that he'd love to get on the board, but at this point, it, it's just he has to be thinking about removing every card possible from Zach's side of the board because every single lore matters here. And, and Jacques, again, will point out, not only does he give a card reckless, but it's a two-lore character. Um, and so Zach, uh, is he threatening game here? I think so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, yeah, that's exactly, that'd be exactly enough. He's at 13. Yep. So, um, and with reckless on the other side, though, he's going to have to challenge here. Let's see if Michael has anything else that he can do. I think I see a fox in hand. But is this going to, even if he can not lose this turn, I don't know if it's going to be enough to keep him from losing the next turn is the problem here. I think Zach, like you said, is fully turned the corner. Yeah, it, it is a challenge. I mean, a card like Grab Your Sword would, would be nice, but let's take a look at all of Zach's characters. They all have more than two willpower. Uh, Peter Pan, uh, I 
I have to double check on Peter Pan. No, yes. Peter Pan is three. So yeah, so even to grab your sword, the, your biggest wide mass removal card is not enough, um, not enough resources to play two of them. So um, it's just going to be tough to get back in this. I, I don't think there's an answer here. Well, Michael's going to start off with going ahead and challenging this rabbit. Card given to Zach here. And losing a lore in the process. Yep. Uh, gaining a lore now off the goat leaving play. And he'll be able to challenge another rabbit and then lose another lore. Making wow. some inroads here. That is true. So, you know, we had seven lore, so we had to move at least one from the board to keep from winning this game, and that's what Michael did. So, you know, delaying Zach's winning uh, unless he has a goat, uh, playing the goat back to the board here, gaining a lore. And you know what we always say, play, play to your outs, draw out the game, um, see what you can do. Here we are going to uh, challenge into the rabbit. Um, we're going to lose the lore again from Rourke. Um, I should have been telling how much how much work that Rourke has done. Uh, probably at least five or six now. It's it's been a lot. The Rourke has been very very good this game. All right, Bevins with I think five lore in play here. He's at thirteen. Barring some really good goat shenanigans, I don't think he can win this turn. But he might be able to put the game out of reach for anything that Michael Arroyo can do. So we'll have to see. Yep, looks like he's going to make the goat have reckless. Yeah, now he will point out uh, Michael losing two lore yep. every single time one of Zach's characters is banished. You have to double up when you're keeping up in uh, in lore count here now. Yep, so there we go. We got a trade of Ursula into the Madame Mim Fox. It's going to make Oreo lose two lore. This might be a record for most lore ever seen a person lose in a game. It's it's probably close to the most lore anybody has ever lost in a Disney lore kind of challenge. Um, it's a bold statement, but but again, I, I, just a masterclass here in knowing that you are you know you have the advantage because there are lines that Zach could have taken here numerous times where he extends a little bit more. Um, there's a number of low cost characters he has in hand. He has the castle there. He could have way earlier just overextended, but instead challenging, you know, forcing some lore to be lost, um, drawing cards, and just slowly playing that advantage over time and grinding his way up uh, to twenty lore. It looks like he's going to go ahead and finish at 17 lore of the turn, developing two more characters. He already had the Tiberius, but you know, he has all the turn box followers. So we're back over to Michael. Let's see if Michael has a rabbit that he could pull out of his hat, not just out of his <laughs> hand here <laughs> to get out of this. Oh, dear. That one was for me. That, was, that joke was for me. I liked it. You're, you're very kind to me. <laughs> I love a good pun. So again, Michael, Michael thinking about his outs here. You know, again, you may as well, uh, you know, think, uh, try to figure out if you have any outs, even if you can extend, you know, another uh, another turn. Um, sometimes in these games, if you know, even if you think you're going to lose and you have no outs, mm -hmm. thinking through these scenarios and figuring out what the optimal move is, even if it's all for naught, can set you up uh, for later games and to help you think through lines which you may not have thought of. So uh, Michael definitely going through the motions here and trying to figure out uh, if he has anything he can do to stop Zach from winning. I think Rabbit's going to dig him a card deeper. Goat's going to get him a lore uh, closer to 20, but I don't think that's going to be enough. Zach's going to gain two lore at the beginning of his turn. Quest up. We're going to see the fist bump. And Zach Bevins is your winner this round eight match. I've got to believe he's fully secured for his day two here, but that's not going to stop him. He's, he's one of the